it would be tough to tell now, but Baltimore did not immediately warm to the idea of sophisticated chocolates. When they asked for buttercreams, we said, oh yeah, we have a ganache that is infused with Earl Grey tea and uh, green tea, and they said, oh, but do you have any coconut cream? And they said, uh, not really, but we have uh, a Shianduya. Basically, I had to create a demand for the product. Yes, and one bag of hazelnuts, please. So year one saw its share of growing pains. But then the second, third year, I mean, it just, uh, the, the business basically doubled. Flash forward more than 25 years, and A. Kirschmeyer not only continues to operate its successful retail store, but now ships worldwide and supplies local specialty shops with fine European chocolates. It's the best place for chocolate, and I'll tell you that Kirchmeier has made me a chocolate snob. <laughs> really, I don't like any other chocolate except for Kirchmeier. A far cry from when he experimented with gold leaf two decades ago. One day I got this call from this lady and she said, uh, you know, I love your chocolate, but I found a piece of foil on top of it. That may have been the last time Kirchmeier used gold leaf, but the German-born chocolatier never stopped believing he could refine the American chocolate palate. People got used to a, a totally new product, you know. They, they didn't know what marzipan was. They didn't know what the ganache was. I made a lot of visits here uh, seven years ago when I was pregnant with my last child. I'm pregnant now. I ate a lot of Kirchmeier, and I kept thinking, well, you know, you know, it makes a happy mom, which makes a happy child, so I'll be good. And he really, he's been saying for a while that he doesn't like chocolate, and I've kind of introduced him to this. He's like, oh, I like this, Mommy. I'm like, oh, so you like good chocolate. I did raise you correctly when I was pregnant. A. Kirschmeier specializes in chocolates. Uh, we are take Turkish um, pistachios and basically fold it into some hot caramel and then cut it and then robe it in uh, dark chocolate. Truffles. Mandarin orange, champagne truffles, amaretto, pear william, coffee, latte, and uh, framboise. And seasonal gifts. Exactly, we have to paint the feathers, we have to paint the eyes so it gets more of a realistic look. It spins the, the chocolate around in the mold till it starts to set. Oh. So the outside is dark, but they're basically both milk and dark. In the, okay. But this one is completely with dark. I come for every holiday. I got, he makes me a big giant bunny on Easter. We've had the big giant Santa Claus. Our main clientele is basically um, the middle aged to older people that, um, you know, appreciate the, the nicer thing in life. They, they uh, go more for the quality rather than the quantity. The same people who might be interested in chocolate's healthy properties. Our goal was always to build on that. We started to use ingredients like sour cherries that are high in antioxidants in addition to the chocolate. We use uh, almonds, we use nuts, pistachios. We basically build on the idea of selling health, healthy pro a healthy product. Combined with a penchant for whimsy and a reputation for impeccable taste. Every chocolatier has like a chocolate that they make basically just to show how good they are and we have created a chocolate that has liqueur inside. And, um, and I'm sure uh, some of our competitors are scratching their head and saying, how did he get that uh, liquid inside of the chocolate? I'm gonna put this in, so I don't want you to see this. It's not a big seller, but it just shows the people that uh, we know our business. What else do I like? The chocolate covered hazelnuts, <laughs> the, um, the bark, all, all the teachers at my kids' school all know that I'm going to bring it to them every holiday so they know exactly what to request. <laughs> I'm addicted, what can I say? <laughs>